Well, thank you for speaking with Spotlight. You've no just um, <laughs> you've just come out the other side of uh, Barcelona, yeah. Sonar. Yeah, the other side is right. But yeah. <laughs> for, actually, for us, it was probably one of the best sonars ever. And I've been to, I think, 21 of them or something. And my dream was always to play sonar by day. And this year, I was able to do both of my main projects, Plastic Man Live by Sonar by Day and then Richie Houghton at Sonar by Night. And uh, by the response and by also my feeling, I thought we, you know, smashed both of them. So you're enjoying the return of Plastic Man as much as everyone else? Yeah, and that's also like, you know, the first track on the new album is called Expose. And that was really, you know, that's the first track, that's been some little things, but that's really the first track of the first album of pure new Richie Houghton music in over 10 years. So getting to the point of feeling actually confident enough with my machines and my direction, you know, it, it took some time to be ready to expose myself. Putting yourself into that moment is scary, but that's what makes it so special and exciting. So, so to actually feel a tremendous um, amount of, of, of love back from the people and that people are enjoying the album and also feeling that the album is something different than what is, else is out there in its own way is really uh, gratifying, you know. When and how did you realize that you were in the right mood to get back in the studio you, and have another crack at it? Yeah, you don't really. Like, um, you never, you know, the creative process is more about trying to notice that moment to capture it. You know, as you get all the success from studio work, you're actually then struggling to hold on to that because everybody wants to celebrate your studio work with you, but all of the around, around the world. So getting back to the idea that when you actually notice you have this creative impulse and you want to record, now it's very difficult to actually capture it because maybe you're in Tokyo or you're on a flight to Ibiza and maybe you don't have the studio, of course you have your laptop, but sometimes you just need to be locked away. So that was, I had a couple of lucky things that happened in the last two years. I did feel that I was inspired to go back into the studio. I actually felt the last two, three years a little bit off balance. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew Richie Haunt and the DJ and a lot of the younger new fans actually didn't even know Richie Haunt, the producer, or Plastic Man. So I started to th think about ways to get back into the studio. And last year, Raf Simmons came to me and asked me to do this Guggenheim show in New York. He wanted Plastic Man live. So that was a, a huge um, opportunity for me. And things happened very, very easily and fluidly. And before I even knew it, the album was done. The album sounds to me like it's like the soundtrack to some sort of mental sci-fi movie no, that's, or something. Yeah, that, that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds good, you know, it, it's, you know, uh, Pl Plastic Man albums are the most direct, the, 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 the most direct connection to the psyche and the feelings and emotion of Richie Houghton. So you are really locked up in my mind. It's not me channeling my emotions through other people's records as I do as a DJ or at, at an enter show to to give you a, a Richie Houghton sound. This is like me through the machine straight to you. So it is very, very mental. It is emotional. And I've always loved that electronic music to me is and always should be a soundtrack to a future. If I know you like, in your shows, you like to have, you know, the full immersive experience, you know, with the visual, uh, audio, even tactile if, if possible sometimes, so that the crowd can just lose themselves in the moment. And I'm wondering, when you play a show like that, are you as lost in the moment? I'm as lost as everybody else. <laughs> the, the more lost I am, the better. Uh, I want to be on the edge of what's happening with my audience then you know, that's what I live for. That was you know, my, my moments in my brain that I remember of my shows are when, that, when those things happened or when I was on a dance floor in Detroit with my friends and hearing Derek May put two records together that I knew, but then they became this holy grail third record that never existed again. It didn't exist before that moment 
and it probably never existed again after, at least not with me in the room. And that's magic. And that's, you know, that's what I want to reach as many times during a show as possible. Ento is not going to be the same as it was last year. Can you, can you tell us a bit about what's going to be new? Yeah, uh, not so much. Uh, <laughs> I think there was a radical change from year one to two because some things didn't work. Um, we moved the sake bar to the, to the outside terrace. Uh, so some of those things will now stay in place because we really saw the flow of the people and uh, th we saw where th things really made sense. Last year, the you know, for me, I had so much fun and incredible shows in the mind room. So we've updated that. The sake bar has a, a facelift. The main room, from the ground up, brand new. Um, the enter air, which is now called enter control, is completely redone with this interactive um, circle in the middle where up to eight people can manipulate and actually interact with the music making process. So I think enter year three is like we, you know, why we, we have the eye, why it's called explore and discover. Enter year three delves deeper into the diversity of electronic music and creative technology culture. The um, marketing campaign of Enter, I mean, you talk about Enter I and you come out with, you know, the right words, explore and discover. Mm -hmm. I think the marketing has been so creative and you can't miss it, <laughs> of Enter. Do you think that's something that you have to do as a promoter to kind of get ahead in Ibiza? Well, the marketing in Ibiza is absolutely atrocious. It's so boring. You know, I actually think it was better 10 years ago. You get on the island, the first thing you're going to do when you're coming out of the airport is or see billboards, you know, naked chicks over here, DJs with crap headphones on here, and, you know, multicolor things there. And you're just like, man, what is, there's no, it, it's, 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 it's like, like, you know, graphic porn. We have one billboard in the, the very beginning, and that's kind of our introduction introduction. It's always a little bit different than the rest of the billboards this year. You kind of see that that's the eye and you're the eye of the storm. You're prepared to enter again and then as you go around the island you see different billboards all on the eye theme but they're actually all different eyes from different artists, some of the residents who are playing. But why this is important for me is that the eye is kind of what people say the window to the soul. It is the connection point to us socially, emotionally and that's the, the heart of what great electronic music is, or any music. It's a connection between an instrument and man and how man or woman uses that to elevate to a greater place creatively. And that's what the lineup is based on, that's what people should expect when they come to enter, to explore, discover, find great music, great artists, and, and of course, a great experience by design, by aesthetics, by curating the drinks, the sake, the cocktails, all this stuff. It's a big project for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the man with the plan, aren't you? Like, it's hard to imagine Richie Horton without all these projects, you know, happening. Yeah, yeah well, you know, I, I, I remember, like, my mum said, like, even from a young age, I, I like to have a gang around me doing cool stuff and kind mm -hmm. of lead that gang. And, you know, I'm not on the playground anymore. Well, actually, I, I am. I'm in Ibiza. It's the <laughs> biggest the fucking big playground there is. Playground. So, yeah, so I, 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 I love what I do. Johannes Gola of Cocoon told us that when you first came to Ibiza, you hated it. So uh, I did. Um, my, first, my first experience on Ibiza was in, I think, 1994. It was for an um, organization called Club UK. And at that moment, Ibiza was mostly progressive English, poppy house music. There wasn't really a place for techno. And they were trying to come and do a techno night at space. So I came over. On week three or week four, I stayed at their villa where all the DJs were staying. They had forgot to change the, the, the sheets from all the different DJs. It was hot and smelly and sweaty. Then I went to the club. There was like 20 people there. And the, after 30 minutes, the club owner or manager of space at that time basically came over to me or told the promoter that, get that guy off. This is not the music that we want here. Or, you know, I, I can't say exactly what went down. But it was the wrong moment for techno on the island. And after that, I was like, fuck this island. Well, you know, I didn't, 
I just saw ugly stuff. I didn't see any of the beauty. I, you know, I didn't have the opportunity like last summer on Mondays and Tuesdays. We were taking mountain bikes and driving up through the north and middle of the island and ending up on cliffs. You know, on our days off to remember why we're here. So it, it it's taken me, you know, all this time to really discover Ibiza. And and Johannes is right. You know, Sven would tell you the same thing. They really had to convince me. Uh, to come back and and it's the only reason I came back was because I trusted and had a great friendship and, and, and still do with Sven and I knew Sven's like me when Sven's on a mission he's on a mission he's like you can't bring Tecto to the island I say we're going to bring Tecto to the <laughs> island I say it I'm going to do it and that's what he did you know we're we're standing on the foundation now all the all the 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 great music that's happening here on the foundation that that Sven and Johannes and Cocoon and 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 us and me helped helped help to uh, to to build through Mondays at Amnesia. Mm. Oh. There's a lot of antagonism at the moment um, towards the EDM scene from mm. everyone else in dance music. You're sort of the techno poster boy. Do you care about these divisions? No, you know, it's like the division between analog and, and digital and vinyl and, and CD and, 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 and EDM and Skrillex and Houghton. And it's like, ask, the, ask the, 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 actually the punters, not the producers. You know, they're listening, going to a Skrillex concert, then coming to see me. They're listening to even Tiesto and then listening to uh, Seth Troxler. Uh, it's... The diversity of electronic mu music right now should actually be welcomed. You know, 25 years ago when there was like a couple of hundred of us in Detroit listening to Derek May, you know, in, in, in the Music Institute, we never imagined how large and diverse it could get. But at that point, it was so inclusive. It's like, you like electronic music? Come in. <laughs> like, oh, you too, you too, brothers, sisters, everyone together. And somehow it has to retain that you know we're still electronic music is a completely different world and culture than all the other music so we should find our similarities and not try to pinpoint stupid little variances or, or negativity so and, and and back to all those years ago is to see that electronic music now is being welcomed by the world that people are slowly and still slowly understanding that a computer a keyboard, a synthesizer, or something with knobs and faders is just as much of a valid instrument as a piano or a guitar. That's the important message to give. And that's, that's my message. Not about that's too hard or soft or too much like rock and roll, or he's jumping into the crowd, or, or he's doing a, you know, a, a party called Big Titties, you know. <laughs> It's, be, it's, it's, be, it's beyond all that, you know, come on, we're all grown-ups, let's celebrate this. Okay, and lastly, uh, a sort of serious question to finish off. Are you aware of your culinary moniker, Mr. Rich T. Horton? My what? Your culinary moniker. <laughs> okay, thank God. <clears throat> this is, um, oh, this no, is Mr. I did Rich T. Horton. <laughs> I, I, I did see this, yeah. Yeah, so do you mind, can we just, yeah, just get a likeness here. <laughs> and, all right, I need to get in the shot. <laughs> it's good, though, it's a digestive, right? Uh, digestive, yeah, pretty right? much. It's the sort of thing you're yeah. going to dip in tea, so, you know, yeah, immersive. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah, it is immersive. <laughs> I'm British. I grew up on these, you know. I, I think before I was, like, able to eat them, my dad was eating them. So, yeah, perhaps uh, there is... Uh, something to some, be proud of, I, I think. I thought you said ceviche hot or something. No. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you made it up? No, I didn't make it up. There's this blog. It's the best thing ever. DJs you can eat. Okay. Uh, and yeah, there's just all these food puns. It's just, what okay. could be better? I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out later. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I'll, been, I'll let you go. Been, there's been weirder and 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 and, and crazier or, and probably even more negative uh, photos and things about me. So I take it all in stride and welcome it. Yeah, all. this is a positive thing. Believe me, <coughs> everybody loves Rich yeah. T. Horton. <laughs> So we have to, maybe we need a little tea bar at Enter next year. Oh, please. Yes, <laughs> no one can dip their rich tea. That would be amazing. And we can mold you and claim. Thankfully, it's a round cookie, so it, should be hard to, it won't be hard to market. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah.